what is truth what is false is a matter of choice so we have chosen to call everything that is unchanging as true and everything that is changing as false what is the justification for this criteria which seems very very strict and the justification is as usual our direct experience and logic we see that if something is changing it means in the past it it was not there it was not present it did not exist and if it is changing in future it will not be there it will not exist probably it will change form something else will exist but that which is there now is going to go away and since it is changing right now also it is not there it does not stay and so it makes no sense at all to say that a certain thing is here exists because as soon as you say it as soon as you utter these words it's already gone it is actually going in front of your eyes so a thing an object an experience that is uh, mutable is seen as not existing on the path of knowledge this is realized of course we can drop down to the relative truth where the changing objects are taken as real true as existing otherwise day to day life will be total chaos if my food does not exist i won't be able to eat it if my car is false it is not going to take me to my office and if this hungry wild animal is false it is still going to kill me it is still going to attack me and so on so you see that this criteria is totally useless for day to day existence but a wise man can see that survival processes continue irrespective of what is true and what is false for example you see the red tomato you know that the red color is not really out there it is a mental function it is a subjective experience which is not present in the world but the red color somehow is helpful for survival because this is how we can uh, spot the red tomato hanging on the plant because it it stands out from the greenery that is why the fruits are so colorful and fragrant and tasty so that the other animals and birds they eat it and they spread the seed around that is the survival strategy of the plant even if it is false it all makes sense as far as survival is considered if it is false still it is useful for survival so we do not see any contradiction we do not see any conflict here between survival and truth it is perfectly okay perfectly okay to survive using that which is totally false in in other words that which is changing and of course if it is unchanging then no questions are asked the funny thing is there is nothing in this world in this universe in our entire experience including the mental experiences that is not changing there is nothing at all which means everything falls in the category of the false this is very strange and i know it is very difficult for a newcomer to even accept this <laughs> criteria because usually we link the real with the survival if it has a survival value and it, if it is useful for us automatically the mind labels it as real that is one of the criteria there is nothing wrong if you choose that criteria that you say that from today i am going to call everything that is helpful in my survival as real as true fine that that makes you it true for you then remember that the true and false are arbitrary and subjective you can make anything true and anything false simply by choosing a suitable set of criteria we have gone to the extreme in choosing the criteria for truth because we want to know the essence we want to know the nature of the existence we want to push it as far as possible we are not satisfied with the flimsy criteria that oh it it is helping in my survival better call it true otherwise i am going to die i won't be able to take any action on it so we leave survival behind we rise above the survival because of our love for knowledge it does not mean that we give up survival <laughs> we use it as as a means for knowledge if we remain alive there will be knowledge otherwise not so that is why the concept of the relative truth was explained in the last episode otherwise there is no need because the survival is survival of the body only nothing else gets killed everything changes in form 
So if you had a body that was immutable, that did not change, then you would trash all these criteria which have survival as their base, as their justification. In practice, we cannot afford to do that because the body is changing, <laughs> body is false and we encounter everything that is false. There is no place called truth in the experience. So we allow the false to continue. We, we call it the relative truth and we use it. What does not change is will be called as the essence or the nature of things. It is very beautiful. It is very elegant. It is not that everything is false. The essence of things, even though they are changing, is true. So let us take some examples. The classic example is of the gold, out of which all kinds of ornaments can be made, different shapes, sizes and uh, complexity. And you can clearly see that the gold changes into these forms. It is forged, it is cast into these forms. So the forms keep changing, but the gold remains the same. It is only a metaphor. In reality, the gold is also changing. The gold is also an experience. So please do not confuse the metaphor with actual case. Very soon we'll find out the essence which is actually present. But for now, let us take the metaphor forward. Then we say that the gold is the essence of the ornaments. And the gold does not change, obviously. The ornaments keep changing. So what is true here? Gold. What is false is the ornament. Although the gold looks like an ornament, but the ornaments do not exist apart from the gold. There is no separate existence of a necklace or pedant apart from the substrate which is the gold. You cannot take out the necklace and leave the gold. It's not possible. So very quickly you will see that the necklace is an idea in the mind. It does exist, but only as an idea in the mind, as a name in the mind, as a form in the mind. The outline of the gold necklace with the name necklace made up of gold. This is a knowledge structure in the mind. However, essentially, it is just the substrate which has changed into a necklace. It can change into anything else, you see, who knows. Next day you get uh, bored of the necklace and you forge it into a ring. So the necklace was not there. Now the necklace is not here. And in the middle also the necklace was not there. It was only a name. What was there was gold. It did not change. It is the essence. It is the nature of the necklace. A second metaphor is that uh, which I use a lot because it's very close to the reality which is of the water and the waves. When you throw a pebble in the silent water the water waves. The water changes. Now let us take a look at these, these changing forms. It was water before it was disturbed. Very quickly the waves they dissipate and the water comes back. In middle it was also water. You cannot say that it became waves. You cannot say that the water turned into waves. The, the water that I saw before disturbing it disappeared. No that did not happen. A phenomena appeared on the surface of the water which we call as wave. And it is changing, obviously. The waves are seen as changing, otherwise they are not seen. If it does not change, we see only water, still water. So the waves fall in the category of the falls. The water, which is the essence of the waves, falls in the category of the true. And we again experiment on it. We try to pull out the waves out of the water to check whether they stand on their own. And you will find that it is not possible. There are no waves there without the water. Isn't that surprising? <laughs> waves do not exist. So our uh, criteria which looks like total madness is really justified. It corresponds very well to our direct experience and logical and rational treatment. It is not strange at all. And technically the changing things are called as existing dependently. You can straight away call them as non-existent. But we see something. It is not that we do not experience them. Whatever we experience is a part of the existence. But what do we say to make it um, more clear is that the phenomena appears. It does not really exist. We choose our words very, very carefully. We say that the phenomena is an appearance 
for example, the necklace or the waves, it does not really exist because it is false. The appearance can exist. And there is no rule in the existence that says that the false will not exist. And then nothing will exist. If <laughs> Although we are very careful in saying it, that no, the false is not there. It appears to be there. And that which is not there, but still appears to be there, is uh, technically called an illusion. We say that the illusion has a dependent existence, not independent existence. For example, the necklace depends on gold to exist. It, do it does exist as an illusion in the mind. There is no necklace really out there. It is all gold. Similarly, there are no waves. It is all changing water. The waves appear as a form of water. Waves do not have an existence which is independent of water. You cannot take them out. They have a dependent existence. Now, I'll tell you something mind-blowing. Everything that you encounter in this world, in this universe, has a dependent existence. Nothing at all that you will encounter or experience or see is independent. Nothing at all. This is almost guaranteed. So, I'll leave you this exercise as a homework. Find out something. Find out an experience which is completely independent, which can be done very simply by finding something which is not changing. Find an experience which is not changing. So things change. Even if they change very, very minutely, they have a life. Some things change very quickly. Now let us take another strange experience. Let us take another object. The tomato. Bright red colored tomato. When I bring the tomato to you, you see, yes, it, is, it exists, obviously. It exists till you eat it. Then you forget about your first true statement, which claimed that the tomato is true. Because your truth also changes. <laughs> you will say, no, it existed at that time. So you see that statement has morphed into a past tense now. So anyhow, the tomato it seems that it exists for a while. Because for some time it did not change really. You did not eat it and so it existed. If nobody eats it and it, let us assume it does not rot, the microbes also don't eat it, then you will find the tomato exists for a million years and still looks the same. And now it takes on a quality of truth. It's not changing, you see. Let us say the tomato lasts for a few years. We will be very comfortable in saying that it is a true entity. It is, it is the truth. The nature of the tomato is tomatoness. It is not changing into anything. Let us say that the tomato lasts for a day or two, which is what happens in practice. We still give it an attribute of truth. We can touch it, we can smell it and all. Let us say that the tomato existed for an hour and many people are going to say that, yes, there is a tomato. It was there. Now it's not there. But it will be kind of 50-50 that it, it, it becomes a function of your memory. How good is your memory? It was there for one hour, so it did make an impression on the memory. Now let us say the tomato exists, appears only for a minute. Now suddenly you will be uncertain of its reality. You will say, wait a minute, it, I saw it, it was there. Somebody took it. You see, the mind will cook, cook up a story and still give it an, a reality because it's still in the memory. But probably tomorrow, day after tomorrow, you are going to forget about the tomato. It did not make any dent in the memory. Let us say the tomato exists for a second only. Appeared, disappeared. Remember, we are not doing anything strange to the tomato. It's just change, changing the speed at which it, it changes. It does change. It is very natural. It is. I am not doing any magic here. I am just fast forwarding the life of the tomato. While you remain in the real time, so appeared in your plate, disappeared even before you could touch it. Now, any, any intelligent person is surely going to say that it is not real. It is a magic trick of some kind. It is an illusion of some kind. So see, the tomato takes on an appearance of being true because it changes very slowly. That's all. If it appeared only for a millisecond, even before you could see it, nobody will know that it existed. Nobody. It is now beyond our senses. Some instruments will pick it up and it will look like noise in the waveform of the output of that instrument. Oh, there was some blip and then, you know, as usual. <laughs> so you can say that, so you can say that the world exists, the universe exists, 
I exist, my mind exists only because they remain for a while. They remain long enough to make an impression on the memory, which means a measurement of some kind. They can be measured and so they can be labeled as true. At least they can be labeled as relatively true. But if your criteria is so strict as we have here, you will find that nothing exists. This is very strange. Now, some people are going to say, no, no, even if you say that things appeared, the appearance itself gives them an existence. Otherwise, they won't appear at all. So, that can be refuted very easily. Let us take an example of the dreams. Now, it is not a metaphor. It is, it is your experience, actually. In your dream, a whole world appears. There are buildings, cities, forests, animals, people. And there is also you with the whole set of mental abilities and mental phenomena. When you wake up, everything is gone. And now any intelligent person will say that it was not true. But wait a minute, it appeared. So according to your latest criteria of the truth, anything that appears must be true. So your dream is also true. And thus it is refuted. And since the dream is an appearance, and so is this world where we, we are right now, the wise men have called the world as a dream because that also appears. Remember that there is a waking waking up from this uh, dream that happens in the night in your mind. But there is no waking up from this dream that is happening in the so-called waking state. Although there is something called awakening where you simply realize that all phenomena is false. All phenomena is an appearance, dependently existent. Not really there. Nothing is actually happening here. That can be called awakening, knowing the nature of the phenomena. So that brings us back to the essence. Just like the essence of the changing ornaments was gold and the essence of uh, the waves was water, what is the essence of the changing phenomena? What is the essence of this tomato? What is the essence of my dreams? And this body is also changing, which many people call it, call as myself. What is the essence of that? So it is also very strange. Their essence is nothing. The essence of the phenomena is void, nothingness. And since it is not really nothing, we have a technical word for it. We call it emptiness. So many people who have seen the first part, they will quickly identify the emptiness with existence itself, with the experiencer itself. It is the existence that is appearing as phenomena or changing experiences and existence does not change because it is empty. There is only one thing that uh, possesses this property of not changing and that is emptiness. If there is a content there, it is bound to change because it is perceived if it is not changing, it won't be even perceived. So people think that emptiness is just like space, but no, it is just like nothing. The emptiness is the nature of the experiencer, of the experience and of the existence. So the word nature is now defined as the most essential description of anything, also known as the true nature. And it is the minimal description. You cannot make it smaller than that. For example, here we cannot go beyond emptiness. There is nothing more minimal than zero. There is nothing less than that. And the nature is also the most fundamental definition. There can be intermediate definitions of phenomena, things, whatever. But uh, when we talk about the nature of something, we go to the bottom most, the most fundamental, the most basic description. So you will immediately see that the experiences keep changing. They are false. Knowledge keeps changing. We don't know what will we know next second. Truth keeps changing. Just function of criteria. But the nature does not change. The nature remains as it is. It can be anything. Probably for some people it is too early to call everything as emptiness or everything as zero. Nothing and everything the thought exists is existing. Probably it is too early to call everything as illusion, an illusion, a dream, an appearance. So sometimes we give a concession and we say that the most essential description of something is like this. 
or the most essential description of you is your memory, things that you have in the memory and so on. We drop down to the relative truth because the seeker is not matured enough to accept or even understand what I just said. So while explaining something, we do like this, that uh, we start with a day-to-day definition of the object or the experience. The experience can be of many kinds. And then we show slowly, you can say that we arrive at the essential nature of that experience. And it is always shown to be the existence itself or the experiencer itself. It is always emptiness. The form, whatever form it is, will be emptiness. And whatever is emptiness is appearing as forms. Now, this is very, very strange. (laughs) But if it does not blow your mind, it is not true really. So, when does the knowledge become a complete knowledge? We go on seeking like this and and we use many levels of relative truth. Keep dropping the gross ones and isolate the refined truth out of it, out of our analysis and logical deductions. The truth is revealed when the nature is known. When the true nature is known, the truth is revealed. And there we can stop. There the knowledge is complete. It is the minimal description. It is the most fundamental. So, there is nothing more to know after this. This ends the seeking there. If you are seeking the truth of something, if you want to know that, that seeking will end as soon as you know the true nature of that, whatever you are after. And that's why the first part of this series was called end of knowledge because that is that is the fundamental thing. Once you know that, nothing remains to know. The seeking should end there on the first step. So some people cannot actually, cannot go, cannot sit there their mind will drift into ignorance, their mind will drop down into illusion and they will start perceiving everything as true. (laughs) Strangely, it is both true and false really. But then, and the goal becomes, the goal of such a seeker becomes exploring the true nature of everything, the whole existence. It is possible to know sitting here in your room on your comfortable chair, sipping a coffee. It does not need more than that. Your mind is your instrument. Remember that. If you have sharpened your instrument, if you have fine-tuned your instrument, purified your instrument, the essence is known right here, right now. Remember the truth does, does not go away. It will be there forever. Even if your mind is taken over by some kind of aberration, the truth will reveal itself as soon as that, that is removed. And in presence of a teacher, it is removed very quickly. So those who are not comfortable sitting with the truth, their uh, their goal becomes knowing the true nature of the existence. That is their path of knowledge then. Gain more knowledge. Find out the real nature. Find out the truth. There their knowledge will end. Now some people will say, wait a minute, there is illusion. I want to know it. It is very interesting. The emptiness is boring. There is nothing there. Nothing to know. My mind is very active. I have sharpened it since last 20 years. I cannot just let go of everything. So, for such people, extremely curious people, uh, even after knowing the true nature, the path continues, the path continues into the details of illusions. So, once the essential nature is known, you can go for an adventure trip into the illusion. Know as many as possible. There is no rule here on the path of knowledge that don't go into the illusion, don't try to know it. It is just emptiness. It is just you. It is just experiencer, forms, falls, dream. We don't discourage the seeker. Okay, go and play. And you see when and you have seen everything actually. It's all the same. All of the illusion is the same. It is just changing forms. But still you can play for a while till you get bored. (laughs) You will find that it looks like the emptiness is boring but actually it is reversed. Just like everything in spirituality. The details are boring. The illusion is boring. It is one thing repeating infinite times. The emptiness is most interesting. It is the most mysterious thing, nothing you will encounter in your life. Without knowing the essential uh, nature, it is possible to know the details, just like many people are doing. You see, most of them are doing only that only. They are after the details. They study the phenomena and utilize it for survival as technology and so on, or to kill each other. It it is possible to know the details, but they lead to ignorance. They lead to confusion. 
they lead to delusion and because you are going to assume the true and false of it all they lead to even more questions they do not take you to the end of knowledge that is the only danger so equip yourself with the essential knowledge first which was given on the in the part 1 and then you will not be lost there is no harm exploring the illusion so we can go ahead after this essential nature is known and you will find that the essential nature of every phenomena is one and the same they do not have separate natures of their own we, we are going to come to this again and again and again so don't worry if you think that oh no i'm going to forget this thing or oh no i i don't realize the essential nature of anything don't worry we are <laughs> for the rest of the series we are going to do only that we'll do it so much that no doubt remains in your mind so totally depends on the curiosity of the seeker you can start studying the illusions or or, or that which is false because everything is false so you don't do not have any options really study that and apply it to your day to day life as relative knowledge as uh, relative truth as technology and it totally depends on the will of the seeker and curiosity of the seeker to use it for uh, worldly purposes for even for self improvement or some people the advanced seekers may want to use this knowledge of the illusion for evolution of the mind they don't want to remain trapped in this cyclic existence the mind is in they don't want to remain trapped in the illusion so they are trying to free the mind they are trying to uh, ascend out of it you can see there is a little bit of identification with the mind here but when once you know the essential knowledge the identification amounts to nothing the identification is also an illusion then so you can do whatever you want you are free bird now that is freedom it is not really required on the path of knowledge to explore the illusion you can say full stop here i know everything i know the nature i have the essential knowledge the rest i don't want to bother with it it's all very much perfect whatever is there the illusion is also very beautiful i don't want to mess with it i don't want to even improve it or destroy it or whatever and that is also okay that is a sign of very mature mind where the curiosity is not killed but is satiated this is a blissful mind there is no tug of desires here so you can reach there very quickly in one step and then relax this instrument this organism can now relax <laughs> it can let things happen as they usually happen the illusion is doing going on you know like a mill it is the business of the illusion to change continue 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 there is there is no end of it